Hey guys, it's Spencer. I'm going to be making a dart frog care video, and this is for the larger species of dart frogs, but dart frogs in general. These are the Dendrobates tinctorius, and, well, Dendrobates tinctorius is areas, and these ones are the Clobot blue, so they, you can see that white on the top of their head, that's going to turn bright yellow, and I'm hoping for a male and female, because I really, really want to breed these guys, and they're both out eating some springtails and isopods just because it naturally supplies them because I put them in that cage and so I have them in a 12 by 12 by 12 right now and it's an exoterra swinging door cage um if you're gonna get dart frogs I would highly 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 recommend you to get live plants and I have umbrella plant right here and whatever this is, but they like it. And I also provide, uh, what's this called? Hydro balls, hydro balls. And I put this little layer thingy over it, and then I put the dirt. And that just holds moisture. You can see there's water in there. So when there's too much water, it drops down underneath. And also, I put a lot of hiding spots in here. So in here, in here, I don't provide any heat too. So, there's a lot of different hiding spaces and I don't provide a heat source because they really don't need it. And also, if you're going to do live plants, I'd recommend using a UVB light, but I just don't have it on him here, them right now because we're still going to try and find some better spaces for these guys. And also, especially with like all of the dart frogs, you cannot keep them in the size of the cage unless it's like a thumbnail, maybe a Zurius. But the Tinctorious get pretty dang big, and I'd recommend a cage this big or a little bit bigger. Uh, it's up to you. The bigger the better for thumbnails and everything. And just because they're small doesn't mean they don't want a lot of space. And you don't want to provide a lot of space for all dart frogs and animals in general, too. Um, and it's good to have live plants. It puts off a lot of humidity, and it's naturalistic. It's good for everything. And also, I spray their cage down just a fair amount. I already sprayed them down today, so I'm not going to spray them a lot. They eat fruit flies, and when they get full size, they could eat small crickets, but probably not because they're pretty dang small. Um, I dust my fruit flies with D3 and get herptivite sometimes. And they're pretty easy to keep um i'd highly recommend them don't hold them not because they're poisonous just because they're called poisonous dart frogs they're extremely poisonous in the wild not in captivity because it's what they eat in the wild that makes them poisonous and they don't have that poison in captivity so i can hold them right now but if i mean they could die from stress and it's just not healthy for the animal and plus you're giving off all the oils on your hand to the frog and plus there's really no point of holding it. It's so small, like, you have such a big chance of losing them. And there's a bunch of different types of um, dart frogs too. There is like leucamellas, which are the bumblebees, um, these ones, which are the Tinctoris azureus, and then there's the uh, Dendrobates erratas, which are crazy blues and greens and stuff. I love those. Hopefully getting one maybe in the future. Um. And breeding is pretty simple. Um, just sticking two together simply, a male and a female. And having them lay eggs in a small body of water, which is what they would do. And it's pretty dang easy to keep them. I would highly recommend them if you want them. I'd recommend them. Just do a little more, just do research on what one you're getting and what size cage you think they need. If they're thumbnail dart frogs, if they're Azurius leucamellas, like it all depends on which type you're getting. Um, keep the humidity really high. Like that's what I would do is keep the humidity really high. And just when they don't, they don't always come out. They're pretty dang secretive. But mine will come out either when I spray the cage or there's food or they're just coming out. And I wouldn't keep a lot. Like I, I wouldn't keep more than two in this cage. Two is plenty in this cage, but they're gonna get an upgrade when they get bigger. And what else? Um, 
Thumbnail dart frogs, you could probably keep two in here and that's just about it. But I wouldn't do anything more than that. And fruit flies, they eat a lot. Don't put too many in there because it's not good to put too many in there. Um, springtails and isopods, it's like the, your little cleanup crew. So if you do you do live and you know what a springtails and isopods are, just put them in the dirt. And the dirt frogs will also eat them too, which is good because you don't need to feed them as much. But you still have to feed them. It's like you have to. And make sure there's a lot of cover. So in conclusion of all the stuff you should do, um, make sure there's high humidity, lots of places for them to hide. If you can use live plants, use live plants. The bigger cage, the better. And don't smother the cage in like decorations. And don't smother them in dirt frogs especially. And know your research on the temperament of your animals because you don't want aggression. That's not good. And a lot of different colors, a lot of diff different options. Pretty low prices, pretty easy to take care of. They're not a super expensive animal to have in the future. It's only expensive when you first buy all the stuff. And then it's pretty low. Because all you need to really buy is fruit flies and bigger cages and things like that. And I would highly recommend dart frogs. And thank you guys for watching this video and see you guys in the next video.